Hi class, in this video we want to move into section 3.5 talking about the derivatives of functions of the form a raised to the x. So f of x is equal to a to the x. So a here is the base and functions of the form f of x is equal to log base a of x. So again here a is the base. So we've done we've looked at the derivatives of you know e to the x and the derivatives the, of the natural log of x. So this is just a, an extension of it to 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 exponential functions and logarithmic functions of of some different base a here. So the the theorem here to find the derivative of an exponential function of the form a to the x. So something like derivative with respect to x. I'll I'll just do a simple one of two to the x here. Okay. When you take the derivative of this, it's going to be equal to the natural log of the base. So here, the base here is 2. So it'll be the natural log of 2 times, and then you just repeat the function, 2 to the x. And that's it. So let's, do a, let's just do a bunch of examples here so you can, so you can get this formula down. So let's differentiate the following. I, I, again, I already did 2 to the x, so here dy dx is equal to the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x. Now here, now just recall, so derivative with respect to x of a to the x is the natural log of 2 times a to the x. So here my base is 1.4. So dy dx here, the derivative, is the natural log of 1.4 times 1.4 raised to the x. All right, now I'm going to move this over here. So f of x is equal to 3 raised to the 2x. So notice up here, it's no longer just an x, it's 2x. So when you see this here, you're going to need to use the chain rule. So f prime of x. The base here is 3, okay? So you're going to get the natural log of 3 times, repeat this, 3 to the 2x times, and then you need to take the derivative of the exponent here. Well, the derivative of 2x is just 2. So you could write this as 2 times the natural log of 3 times 3 to the 2x. All right, let's move into um, derivatives of logs now. So here's uh, two theorems from your text, uh, theorems 13 and 14. So we know that the natural log of a is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of a raised to the h power minus 1 over h. And then the derivative, and this is what we're going to use. The derivative of log base a of x is 1 over the natural log of a. Okay, so whatever the base of the log here is, you write it as 1 divided by the natural log of that base times 1 over x. Okay, let's just do a bunch of examples to see this. All right, so we're going to differentiate all of these functions here. And just to recall, to help, I'll write it on this slide here. When you have the derivative with respect to x of log base a of x, okay, it's 1 over the natural log of a times 1 over x. So for this first one here, dy dx, well, look, the base is 8. So this is 1 over the natural log of 8 times, and then I just have an x in here, 1 over x. Here, recall when you have nothing there, all right, it's really log base 10. So dy dx is equal to 1 over the natural log of 10 times 1 over x. Okay, here, notice you have something inside here. So here you're going to need to use the chain rule. So it's log base 3. So this is f prime of x is equal to 1 over the natural log of 3 times 1 over the inside. So the inside here is x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside. Well, what's the derivative of the inside of this log here? 2x. So f prime of x here is equal to 2x divided by the natural log of 3 times 2x plus 1. And then over here, you're just going to need to use the product rule. So f prime of x here, take the derivative of this, you get 3x squared times log base 5 of x plus here x cubed times 
I'm going to move it over here, just going to run out a little space here, times 1 over the natural log of 5 times 1 over x. So let me move it down here so it's a little bit easier to see. It's 3x squared log base 5 of x plus x cubed times 1 over x natural log of 5. And you'll see an x, 1x here will cancel this to make this x squared. So you're just left with 3x squared log base 5 of x plus x squared over the natural log of 5. So again, just following the formulas, you know, recognizing when you need the chain rule, recognizing when you need the product rule, and so on. Let's do two more just so we can fully understand and make sure we got this. So again, here you're going to have to use the product rule. So remember, log, this means log base 10. So g prime of x. Take the derivative of 6, x to the 6. You get 6x to the 5th times log of x plus x cubed, or x to the 6th, excuse me, times 1 over the natural log of 10 times 1 over x. And you'll notice this x will make this x to the 5th, and you're left with 6 x to the 5th log of x plus x to the 5th over the natural log of 10. All right, so now over here we have something inside the log function, so you're going to need to use the chain rule. So dy dx is equal to, okay, base is 8. So it's 1 over the natural log of 8 times 1 over what's ever on the inside, x cubed minus 7, times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x cubed minus 7 is 3x squared. So dy dx is equal to 3x squared divided by the natural log of 8 times x cubed minus 7. Just like that. All right, so I want to end this now, this lecture, talking about uh, an application of these derivatives, okay? And this is about annuities. So the value of an annuity is given by this formula here. So the total value of the annuity is equal to A times P, where P is the amount of the regular payment. So P is how much you're paying into the annuity. So how much you're paying in. So times, then in parentheses, 1 plus R divided by N. So R here, R is the annual percentage rate, so the annual rate. And this N here, this is the number of times compounded per year. So it's p times, then in parentheses, 1 plus r divided by n raised to the n times t power minus 1, close the parentheses, divided by r divided by the square root of n. And I'm going to do this problem here, and I'm going to have it in the slides, but you trust me, it gets a little tricky how to do this in your calculator. So I encourage you after or as you're watching the lecture, when you see me do these calculations or I have them in the PowerPoint here, please go home and, and pause the video that you're watching now and plug it into your calculator and see if you can get the same things. And if you can't, then reach out to me and, and we'll, we'll work on it together. Okay, so here's the problem. Uh, Javier deposits 150 every month, okay? So this is my P into an annuity with an annual interest rate of 4.5%. So this is R. Okay, you just have to change it to a decimal. Assume the interest is compounded monthly. So you're told it's compounded monthly, so you're given that n is equal to 12 because you're compounding 12 times per year. Find a function a of t that gives the value of Javier's annuity after t years. Okay, notice how nothing in here is given telling you how many years you're going to pay in. So that's the t. The t is going to be uh, the function part or the value that we're going to input. What is the value of Javier's annuity after five years? And what is the rate of change of the value of Javier's annuity after five years? So whenever you see this rate of change, derivative. Okay, 
So here's the here's the function. So we have p, we have r, and we have n. So all you're going to do is you're going to plug it into the, the that um, equation and simplify it. So the annuity here is equal to remember it's p times then in parentheses one plus r over n raised to the n times t power minus one all over r divided by n. So literally you're just plugging in p, you're plugging in for r, you're plugging in for n, and then you're just simplifying. And when you clean this all up, um, you can verify this on your own here, but when you clean this all up, you end up getting the value of annuity all right, as a function of t, because we had nothing to replace t with. So a of t here ends up being 40,000 times 1.00375 raised to the 12t minus 1. Okay. So the next part here, in five years, what is the value of the annuity? So if you just plug in five here and plug it into your calculator, you'll end up getting that the annuity is worth. So remember, he's only been, Javier's only been depositing 150 a month. Boom, boom, boom. So after five years, his annuity will be worth $10,000 $10,051.83. All right, so now the next thing, find the rate of change. Okay, so going back, find the rate of change after five years. So you're going to have to take the derivative of the A of T function. Okay, so to find the rate of change and the value of Javier's annuity, we first find the derivative of this. So do this here. This is the part you have to find the derivative. The rest of this stuff is just constants, right? So this, this right here, Right, ends up being the natural log of the base times the original the original function again, so 1.00375 raised to the uh, 12 t power, and then the derivative of the exponent 12 t, which is just 12. So if you do this, all right, do this correctly, work through this, the, you factor out the constants, the derivative of one goes away. So you can see it's just 40,000 times what I have up here. It ends up being 1,796 and 63 cents times, because this, this is just 40,000 times this times this. That's what that works out to be. Times 1.00375 raised to the 12t. So then to find out the rate of change after five years, you're just gonna plug five into the derivative. Okay, so if you plug five into the derivative, you can see that the rate of change at, at f after five years, it's changing $2,249.01 per year. All right, class, so basically just follow the formulas for these. Um, and if you have any questions as you work on the, the problem set for this, uh, please let me know.